think uh, uh, this. Um, okay, so hi everyone. This is a Kibbutz community meeting on May 18th of uh, 2022. Um, so as I see it, um, I think uh, first of all, I, I would like everyone probably to um, leave uh, his or her name in the agenda document or the meeting minutes. If you want, you can um, introduce um, or add your attendance here. Um, while you're at that, maybe we have some new people here on the call. I'm not exactly sure if that is. I guess, uh, Andre, you introduced yourself last week, I guess, if I remember correctly, or uh, in an earlier meeting. I may be wrong on that. No, actually, I never, never uh, introduced myself. I just started uh, from introducing my PRs, but not myself. <laughs> Actually, I'm working in plant. Uh, this is a um, company who is making uh, product deck house and many other products for the Kubernetes. And right now we are considering to use Kubevirt to make a uh, virtualization platform and add an opportunity to run virtual machines in it. Uh, we working with the Cilium and right now I'm working hard to make um, Kubevirt fully utilize the Cilium and all its, all these features, amazing features it, it has. Okay, thank you for that. Um, yeah, and, and I feel guilty because I, I didn't yet look at your PR, I guess, because I was assigned. I'm sorry for that. I, I tried to take it. But although I must admit, I don't have uh, the experience in the network um, area. So I think that um, 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 uh, Miguel uh, normally would, would rather cover that. I'm not sure if he had got to that. I guess uh, that you too um, already talked about your PR, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if you want, um, uh, should it be that you would be using Kubert at your company, probably, please feel free to add your uh, usage to the uh, to the document that covers um, um, the uh, yeah the users and the contributors. If, if that makes sense. Yeah, we are going to do that, but for now we're just considering it. So I'm preparing some MVPs, and after everything will be considered that yes, we are going to use it, and we will send uh, these links to this document and we'll add to the cube to our page that we are consuming it yeah great thank you for that um so um as we don't have any agenda notes i guess that people would have filled in something if they had something on their mind and let's move well on. i have some pr which i just made it I can uh, edit to agenda, I think. I, I guess. Oh, sorry, agenda. Also, it's it's good. You could you could just um, add it to the photo press, right? Yeah, yeah. Then we can talk about that if you want. Um, but but first, let's then go to the open floor. Um, Brian, you have something there. I'll put the mic yeah. to you. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. We can yes. Hear. Um, yeah, just, just an update on the issue that we were seeing in Kubert, Kubert CI. So there was an ongoing issue with the pre-submits failing for the last couple of weeks. But um, so that, that issue has been resolved since this morning. So it was an issue when the cryo releases. Um, so we're able to take PRs again to Kubert, Kubert CI. So just if you have any PRs waiting there, just run retests and they should be okay. To add up on that, I guess that, that there were already a couple of PRs that you unholded yourself, Brian, right? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've tried to take care of some of the PRs, but um, there might be a couple that I might have missed. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. I can confirm at least that, that my PR is uh, working again, and which is really great to see. Thanks for that. Um, Okay, so next up, we would say then uh, go over to the area of pull request that needs attention. Um, I'm going to share my screen. That would be. Okay, let's move the meeting. Here it is. 
Now I suppose I need to find my window, which I want to share, because I have lots of those. One second, please bear with me. There it is. I can share. I hope everyone can see my screen now. Yes, we see. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to open this one. And yeah, the stage is yours. Yeah, actually, Miguel has already answered almost all my questions, but I would like to know what, what is the better way because I would like to have the live migration for virtual machine running in bridge mode with the um, uh, pod networking and with the upcoming Mac Vetup mode. Uh, the question is that right now Kubernetes has no opportunity to set up Mac address directly. So CNI is specification allowing doing that, but Kubernetes does not allow that. So we can do that only through the multus. And there is a couple of CNI plugins who are allowing do, doing that through the um, Kubernetes annotations. So we can add some annotations and the MAC address will be specified for the pod and it will be consumed for the virtual machine. The problem is that we can't migrate virtual machine if MAC address of the source uh, pod and the target pod will be different, but we can retouch and attach the network card. And in this way, we can consider like live migration is done. It's not totally the live migration because it still requires some changes for the virtual machine spec. I thinking what is going to be better to not allow such migrations if the MAC address is different or to do this uh, stuff to detach and attach network device card if anyone has some ideas i would like to to hear that if not i will just prepare mvp and we're gonna see you know maybe um at the moment we have a very small forum here probably uh i'm not sure have you taken this already to the mailing list of cupid dev or did you no not yet i just prepared mvp yeah okay so I think that uh, maybe some, some people, like I said, maybe most of the people might not be here because of the KubeCon that is happening. And mm -hmm. I guess that if we, if we want more answers, probably just uh, a good a good idea would probably to, to uh, write all that down into the Kubert, uh, dev email and, and uh, see what you can get from there. Probably. Yeah, that's a great I, idea. You know. mm -hmm. I guess Thank you. At least, um, for example, uh, if Miguel would be here, I guess he would have answers for you. But as he isn't, so I, I don't know. Yeah, he is already reviewing my PR, so it's. I just thinking about other community and. Uh, yeah. I just yeah, think the better if implementation. You, if you just, yeah, if you, if you just send send the email, you would reach lots of people with network knowledge on 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 the community email list. I guess. So, Super, we'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your contribution. And like, like I said, hey, I actually pinged uh, Miguel and he will be joining so we can get back to the topic okay. once Miguel joins. Yeah, so, so then let's circle back and uh, um, until uh, or when Miguel um, joins again. So, let's have a look. Um, Oh yeah, I see someone else here. This is Ryan's uh, pull request on uh, that Ryan edit. So uh, Ryan, please go ahead. Sure. Uh, so this is a, a pull request that um, someone's been uh, someone's worked on, but I think it's um, been hasn't seen a whole lot of activity. Um, so the, the the use case for this is to uh, allow different uh, NUMA member memory allocation policies. So like strict to leave or preferred. Um, we uh, like at NVIDIA, we actually had some interest in um, doing some work with interleaved. And so we wanted to see if we could push this feature, um, but there hasn't been a lot of activity. I, I don't know who, um, if anyone knows who the, um, the guy that originally authored this, he hasn't really responded to it. Um, but uh, I think 
since we haven't seen anything, maybe we'll, we'll pick this up again um, from him and, and keep pushing it. But I just wanted to bring some attention to it in case um, uh, some other people have some comments on this since um, I, I think the PR just ha has only some limited visibility. And in case people disagree with the direction at all, we can, we can have that discussion. Okay, so um, so yeah, I guess that uh, Tomasz Knupik um, is uh, someone from Nvidia that, that you were talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna take this up and, and continue to push it. I I was kind of hoping that maybe we'd run into the the uh, the original author here, but I don't I don't see him. And so if if that's I, I guess we'll we'll just assume as we'll we can just push this along and. Um, um, Who's like who's the good person that we can have to review this? I think Marcelo's already on this. Um, I mean, should we? Who else? Maybe can we have a few? Like, do you have any other suggestions for people to review this? I um, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe Vladik might be a good person, but yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, Numa, could you chime in on that? Do you know who might be able to review Numa? Yeah, I think Vadi can, I can have a look too. Um, do you want to have a look on this PR or, or the new one, which will be opened? Um, I, I think what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna take the same approach. I, I think it, it seems to make sense. And uh, so what would, so I guess what we'll do is we'll close it and we'll just reopen it with, with um, Tomas as the owner. And um, yeah, we can, I can tag you um, and uh, Marcelo and, and Vladek and, we can yeah, we can start discussion from there. Sounds good to me. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, then I'm going to look whether Miguel has joined again. Doesn't look like it. So I think then let's see. Let's have a quick uh, look at. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, could you repeat what you just said? Ah, Miguel, you're here. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Okay, so um, um, uh, Andre was, was asking for uh, feedback on the PR, probably. Um, Andre, maybe you can repeat your question directly, probably. Sorry for yeah, that. actually, I got uh, feedback from the Miguel already. I was just thinking uh, to put this uh, question into, into discussion, what, we, what will be better to uh, to read, uh, to depend on other CDI plugin annotations or just implement the logic to detach and attach network card directly from VM after the migration. But I got that, yeah, probably better to write into mailing list if I want to get more answers. Yeah, I think that's a good, uh, like um, a fair pointer you got. Like my personal opinion is this should be a uh, CIGN agnostic as we've already spoken, but let's see what the rest of the community uh, thinks about it. Uh, I'm just came up with a couple of questions about this and I'll just put them in the, um, in the PR and you can, we can move the discussion there if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's discuss cool. it in the- Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you too. Thank you. Okay. So let's see. Let me have a quick look at the, at the mailing list if you have something that might not be covered. Nothing. So I don't see anything of importance that hasn't been covered. In the latest, if anyone has something regarding mailing list, please speak up now. Okay, um, so then we have time for a bit of bug scrub. So let's have a look at that. Okay, that is something. Symposium. I don't have to scrub this. Again, it's the same thing as I just did. No, this is. Oh, yeah, this is one thing um, I initiated. Um, 
This is for both logging of work cut and push power for a URL. And header here is changing. Yeah, I think that's exactly looks like probably we, we have something that um, that's a, a verbose messaging is not working for the console and word, word couple. So I think we can accept this. That's my opinion. Other? I, I believe we don't have any logs there, so that's why we don't see anything. <laughs> okay, so you're saying we don't we don't use the logging at all, and thus uh, we don't need uh, we don't we don't see any logs. Um, uh, okay, interesting. Yeah, maybe no logs, no problems. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but besides that, it would probably be helpful if um, uh, if someone wants to wants to have a look at, for example, what. Uh, uh, what actually has been being done there that uh, a verbose logging would, would probably help to understand uh, what they're doing there. But yeah, like I said, this is just my opinion. Yeah, you, usually it is a problem that you cannot boot, uh, boot the system. So you are stuck in the, in the grab or BIOS or whatever you are using. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then you need to use the VNC. So what I understand from this is um, that uh, they even don't see anything, um, um, anything before the first control printout from the from the console, right? And I'm not exactly sure if, if we would even see something like that from, from the grab or something. May I say something? I see he used verbose T8. I'm not sure uh, which logger do we use, but if you use verbose T10, you usually see all the um, uh, headers and everything you need in cube, cube control. Okay, I think the cube, uh, the Kubernetes client logger, or the, the logger inside the Kubernetes client uh, package is, is used here. If I, I so maybe he just needs to try. Uh, Verbosity 10. I can try that even right now. Okay. So, um, but I'm not sure if it's going to work. No, there is nothing. I just try, tried it on my installation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but this is kind of useful feature. Yes. I, I don't know. I would say it is not bug, it is feature requests that you need to have more verbose logging not sure how to implement it to be honest well i guess i guess that we just need to add some some uh debug statements um within the work couple console right so that we can see for example how the connection is made and, and so on and so forth yeah yeah because uh Coop, CTL usually writing uh direct row curl commands zero url commands with the headers and everything And besides that, I'd say probably um, this is also could be a good first issue, right? Lugo, what do you think? I think yes. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so let me see if we even have that table. I don't know, to be honest. I haven't had a look at that recently. Two identical PCI devices. Interesting. Two identical GPUs. And then the cell ID. I think that was for something like this. And I think that um, Vladix answered this 
question or a, a very similar question on a similar issue, I guess. Ah, Alicia was already looking at that. Okay, so I think we don't need to do anything here. Alicia is already looking at it, uh, into this. That's great. Okay, so next one. This is by Alex Kalinuk. Okay, I don't think I need to do anything here. Like the attacker, this from Wolf Handler on on Slack Mac devices. Interesting. Not completely familiar who might be a good contact point on this. Yes, uh, Rift Handler should modify node spec to add maximum amount of devices, not sure which ones. But there seems some something wrong with the um, uh, Rift Handler because it does not recognize this flag. I guess it is set in uh, pod spec but it is not recognized by the binary. I would see uh, uh, the CMD uh, first handler and if it has this flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe we could also ask, for example, like um, whether the user can provide some logs so that we can have a better point of investigation. No, I think it is enough logs. I can check that. I have some weird handlers running right now. Okay, so can I assign you on that? Well, okay. <laughs> I'll take a look. Yeah, if you want to have a look, I'm a, yeah, I, I don't want to force it on you, but I was just. Okay, okay, okay. I was thinking that you, you were interested somehow. <laughs> By the way, you are not yet in the in the Kubel community. Can that be? I'm not yet, yes. Yeah, okay, so you can also work on that if you want. I would like to have new organization page in my GitHub page, in my GitHub <laughs> profile, if it's possible. Okay. What should I do for that? I can I can solve in some, some issues sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can just contribute an issues and I think that would be something that, uh, that would help, of course. Um, so what's your GitHub handle? KB APS, is that uh, right? Yeah. Yep. What? I'm sorry to spoil the, the um, ah, no, wait a second. Oh, yeah, I did what, um, what he just said. And actually the thing is like the parameter has to be dash dash max dash devices. I'll paste like um, what's the link for the, uh, the link for no. that? It's not yeah, I see that there is existing this flag. Yeah. Well, if uh, you can, you can answer that, of course. And uh, yeah, I think you should really apply for the, the membership to the community. I'm not sure if you need a sponsor. If you need, I'll happily sponsor you. And as a reminder, if I think you can also kind of add your organization, like your, the company you work for, on mm -hmm. our user or community uh, list of users. I don't know exactly the, um, the link to that, but I'll... I'll find that out for you if you're interested, of course. Yes, I'm interested in that, yeah. All right, so I'll get back to you on these two. Thanks. Oh, I see Daniel. He's looking also for it. 
Yeah. That's not that successful with that, but yeah, <laughs> so let's see. Um, see for documentation. What, is, what do we have here? I think it's uh, member due diligence, for example. You have to, um, I guess that just, just for uh, completeness, I'm just dropping the links, um, Andre, into the chat now where you can find the new member policy and the new member checklist. And um, in general, the process is that you create a new uh, 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 PR against Project Infra where you add yourself as a member to the orgs file. And, but details are described um, on this page. So let me see. Uh -huh, I got it. Yeah, Thank you. policy for org members for community membership are described here um, and yeah um, there is there should be everything that you uh, that you need to um, uh, that you need to look at to, to be able to apply for a membership and yeah thanks for um, working on to into our community and, and uh, taking part in this um, Okay, so um, we strayed a little bit, I think. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to get back to what we were working on previously, which is uh, the um, unknown flat max devices, which uh, Lubo just answered. Thanks for that. Um, so next one will be the Valero backups. So I hope we have someone from storage here. Yes, uh, yes, we have. Hey, hey. Um, I just uh, don't want to put it directly to you, but uh, I guess... Oh, it's already. I'm already on CC, I can see. Ah, great. <laughs> Alicia okay. me. Okay, I will check it. Okay, okay, thanks. That's man. good. So, okay, um, there is another thing. This is the deprecation policy. Okay, yeah, that's from Itamar. Okay, this uh, looks more like a um, like a uh, an issue for tracking this, which should then be okay. So this one is the make error. Make This looks like you can't even fetch the Basel build, build tools here in the in the Basel. So a format error, maybe. If yeah, from the stack traces, looks like you can't even fetch the Basel build, build tools at the fir at the first start. I think that's the first thing Basel does when you start your build. Um, that it fetches um, dependencies, of course. If you start, you can't do this. Um, so I'm. If anyone, uh, if no one disagrees, I answer uh, or ask uh, for um, uh, whether he uh, or they are sitting behind a corporate firewall, uh, for example, so that they would not be able to uh, pull in the dependencies that Basil requires for building.
one has a lead. I thought this was somehow longer for us. Does anyone know David Kupa? for more information. Um, this was his last shot, maybe again. Uh, he probably wrote that he found it. His uh, scanning system say that or mm, container scanning tools. Such a twist lock. Okay. Um, and there are links to any uh, CV, so I guess it will send. Yeah, Daniel, he discovered uh, some other uh, CV vulnerabilities uh, in uh, recent times. Hmm. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I remember something like that, but, but faintly, I must admit. Um, I think what we probably could do here would be something like, um, is, is that twist lock? Um, I'm not familiar with this. Is, is, that, is this open source? Could we uh, just... Uh, uh, apply it on our code base somehow, or how does it work? Uh, try opening CVE. I think there will be written where problem exactly is, like some, yeah. Mm, okay. So, and here is written probably that we need to update some libraries and... Yeah. No, what I was, uh, sorry, I, I maybe, I maybe might not, might not be, um, 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 expressive enough. Uh, what I was thinking about was what he's suggesting that that we should probably um, employ something like like twist lock. And I was thinking about that we probably could ask something like a pre-submit check where we would just run twist lock over our code base so that we don't happen to have this ever occurring again. So something like a CVE check, which is run on every. Oh, uh, I see. Right. I think I think Dependabot can do that. Okay, so you're saying that maybe we could just uh, enable Dependabot. This is the GitHub functionality, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We use yeah, this so in our project in that always sending harm to us some vulnerabilities. So I'm going to do the following. We should follow up with some automation that should cover the Find 
it to me so that I don't lose track of it. Okay. Um, so let's see. I think that we have covered around seven days of issues. So we're, we're looking at the clock, it's a quarter to five on my one. So um, I don't want to bore everyone further. So um, if everyone agrees, we might just um, uh, skip over to some, yeah, whether someone probably wants to um, mention anything as a final word or something, I'll leave the stage to you. Okay, um, so um, then um, thanks everyone for your attendance. Um, have a great rest of the day. And um, yeah, let's see us next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.